Hey everybody, before we get started, I gotta make a quick apology. As you know, in my last video, I called out sports clips, and I just wanted to say, I'm sorry. Psych. Sports clips, you're still dead to me. This is still garbage. Don't go to sports clips. Anyway, all that aside, what's up? Welcome to another training recap. I hope you guys have enjoyed the series so far. We've gone through the first three weeks of my training block. Today we are covering week four, day four. This will be our second upper body workout of the week. And we are focusing primarily on the overhead press as our compound lift. I'm a huge fan of the overhead press as a compound lift. It's not part of the big three that I'm working on, bench press, deadlift, or squat. But it is something that I always program. I love pushing heavy stuff overhead, the danger. It just feels so good to have that much weight above your head. I don't know. I love the overhead press. So we're going to talk about that. We're also going to talk about a bunch of accessory movements that I program in this, uh, in this day. It's the middle of the week. It's the second out of three upper body days. So I really throw in a lot of accessory work, um, and really just push myself as hard as I can. This was the last week before a deload week. So the name of the game here was push, push, push as hard as you can, knowing that you got a rest week coming. Uh, there will be a video out next week about deload science, about, you know, taking full weeks off, taking deload weeks, taking low stress weeks, whatever you want to see. So if you haven't subscribed already and you'd like to learn more about deload weeks, you can subscribe to the channel and you can be notified when the deload week video comes out sometime next week. But let's jump in to the workout. We start off as we always do with our compound lift, meaning the overhead press. Okay, so for the overhead press, you can see I set up in a squat rack. Throw on the wrist straps just to keep the wrists in line. Get underneath the bar, huge deep breath. We're doing five reps, it seems. Yeah, we're doing five reps here of 185, and we just got to push that evil away from us. So this was a good, clean five reps. I think I struggled a little bit on my last one, but nothing too crazy. Got it. Got it done. Uh, the thing about overhead press that I'd like to emphasize here is a lot of people take a really wide grip with overhead press. For me, I find a closer grip uh, just where the knurling ends on the bar allows me to keep my shoulders out of impingement. So instead of being here and pushing up like this, which I can do with dumbbells, when I'm using a barbell, I like to keep here and push up like this. So we'll take a look quickly at the second set. Uh, I felt like 185 was moving pretty well, but I didn't want to go too far and lose technique on my overhead press so i just dropped the weight down to 175 as opposed to 185 we went down 10 pounds felt like i could hit 175 with with proper technique while still getting a good stimulus in again we go straight up as you can see my head kind of moves forward at the top of the range of the movement just so that i can get a full press fully lock out my elbows and we hit it the tempo is a little slow here but i think the weight the weight was pretty high so i'm okay with a slower tempo making sure that every rep is controlled. Obviously, when we're working with weights over our heads, we wanna make sure that we can handle the weight first and foremost with proper technique. And we also wanna make sure that when we get to that top range of motion, we're not gonna lock out and lose control. We lock out and can have a controlled negative on the way back down. Overall, really happy with where the overhead press is. Like I said, it's not. So after overhead press, we move on to the close grip bench press. And I have a little treat for you. Right here, we've got state of the art example of where to put your hands when you're doing the close grip bench press this is a question i get asked all the time what is wide grip what is close grip so if we look here our lovely model that's me from the past by the way great job jonah from the past right here i'm demonstrating the wide grip and then we move into close grip right as the knurling ends and the knurling is the edged part of the bar if you don't know right where that ends is where i'm bringing my first finger when i'm doing the close grip bench press same grip width as when i'm doing an overhead press coincidentally so when we take a closer grip approach what we're really trying to do is activate more of the triceps and the lower chest as opposed to my competition bench press where i'm literally just trying to press as much weight as possible so i'm trying to change that movement arc bring my arms closer in and i'm really thinking about activating the triceps and lower chest as i said before and when I program close grip bench press, I'm not really going for weight. So you'll see here it's 185. Uh, if I was doing my competition bench press, this would be a weight that I would be warming up on, not something that I would be repping. But because the weight is lower, we are able to push higher reps. So right here we're doing 185 for 12 reps. We're going to set up like we were doing a normal bench press. So I set up, make sure that my scapula is retracted, bring my arms close together, and then I set up close grip, unrack the weight, 
Ooh, a nice little belly shot right there. Congratulations, everyone. You get a little look at that. We're just repping it out. We're going as hard as we can. In my brain, I'm thinking tricep activation as always. I think as I move forward with my training and with my close grip bench press, obviously the 12, the 185 was moving pretty well right there. So I think I'll probably add more weight. But again, this was the last week of training before we get a deload week. So I was pushing pretty hard, but not too hard that I injured myself. I just finished watching a video earlier that day of a guy incline bench pressing uh, and he was maxing out and he tore his pectoral muscle so badly that I think I was in my head a little bit and I didn't want to push the weight too much. So I stuck with 185, but I definitely think that I could have gotten better. Anyway, that is our second compound lift of the day and our last compound lift of the day. So next we're moving on to assisted pull-ups. So as you know, I'm kind of a bigger guy. I'm sitting at 285 right now. Weight loss is definitely one of my main goals and I'm still working on it, but there's no shame in using assistance, either using a band to help you do pull-ups or if you have a machine like we have here at the LA Fitness, you can use that too. So let's take a look at the lift. I'm doing six reps of minus 100 pounds. So meaning I have 100 pounds on the weight stack. So basically I'm pulling up 185 pounds. Again, as I'm doing assisted pull-ups, I wanna have the movement be as similar to lat pull downs that we saw in the last upper body workout. So I have a slight lean back and I'm really just focused on driving my elbows towards my hips and activating my lats. Overall, I'm pretty happy with where I'm at. Uh, I started doing assisted pull-ups. I was at 130 pounds. So each week I'm trying to lower that weight and hopefully soon within the next year, I'll be doing pull-ups on my own, just full body weight, but that's assisted pull-ups. Don't be afraid to get assistance. Again, you can use bands, you can use these, these weight machines. There's no judgment, just work hard. Moving right along, we're going to dumbbell rows. So usually I like to do dumbbell rows at a lower rep range, six to eight, but I was, decide, I was feeling we weren't getting a lot of hypertrophic stimulus in the lats. So we're moving up to 12 reps, 70 pounds here. And as you can see, I'm using a bench just to stabilize, trying to stay as flat as possible. The hair is looking god awful as always, but you're in the gym, man, you're working hard, who cares? Something that I like to focus on when I'm doing dumbbell rows is bringing the dumbbell to the crest of my hip. It's not a straight up and down movement where I'm using a lot of shoulder, I'm cresting the hip, which is really helping me get that row motion instead of just a straight up and down and activating a lot of the rear delts and a lot of the upper traps. Instead, I'm activating the lat and just rowing that dumbbell right into the crest of my hip as much as possible. I've gotten a lot of questions on whether, where I should be feeling the dumbbell row from some of my clients. And again, it's a, it's a lat dominant movement. So you wanna make sure that you're going straight. You're not going straight like this, right? That's activating the rear delts and the traps. You're rowing from here straight into the hip, just like that. Moving on to a newer exercise that I haven't really been programming too much, but I've been watching some videos on it. I think it's interesting. We're moving on to the lat push down. And I like to use the wide grip attachment. And we're just doing straight arms and we're pushing straight down into the pelvis, straight from top to bottom here, activating the lats once again. I'm working on hypertrophy here with the lat push downs. I'm doing 52.5 pounds for 15 reps, just trying to keep our arms as straight as possible, not bending the elbows at all, just having our shoulders do the work and activating the lats to bring the weight down towards our pelvis. A newer exercise for me, but one that I'm really actually enjoying, I feel a really good activation in the lats. A lot of people that I've worked with and talked to say that they have a really hard time noticing the activation in the lats. And I was like that as well. I would do rows, I would do dumbbell rows, I would do lat pull downs, and I would say, I'm not really feeling it in my lats, I'm more feeling it in my shoulders. This exercise right here woke my lats up. There's no other way to put it. When I did this, I felt a stimulus in my lats like I had never felt before. So if you're struggling with muscle ac muscular activation, a mind-muscle connection with the lats, try this exercise and let me know how it works for you because it really helped me to activate my lats and I feel like the stimulus across all of my back-centered movements has changed because of this. After the back has been thoroughly annihilated, we move over to the pec deck machine. One of my favorite machines, I feel like you can really overload the stimulus on your chest. No fear of injury here. You can really go hard and you can go for a lot of reps. So right here, we're doing 145 for 15 pounds. When I set up on this machine, I, I don't want my back to be resting on the backrest. So I take a slight lean forward. I set up my pins so that my arms can go a little bit farther past 90 degrees uh, when I'm doing my rotation. We're activating the chest here, really pushing to finish off those pecs. I, for one, personally like to develop my chest with heavier compound movements, bench press, incline bench press, 
but there's something to be said about the hypertrophic effect of using a pec deck or a cable crossover, something like that. You can overload really well. You don't have to be afraid of, you know, not getting a spotter with the bench press or the incline bench press. You can really just push your chest really hard. Uh, it's a great movement to have towards the end of the workout because it's not too fatiguing, but it will really get that chest burn going. Huge recommend for the pec deck. All right, two more exercises. The first one is the dreaded bicep curl 21s. Now, before we look at the footage, yes, we are doing 21 reps of this exercise. So at the end of the day, we will be doing 21 easy bar bicep curls, but we're not doing 21 full range of motion bicep curls. Basically, you start with seven reps of a half rep from the top to the middle of the movement. Then you do seven reps of, from the bottom to the middle of the movement, and then you finish off with seven full range of motion. So I'm doing 70 pounds here. I'm setting up as I would any normal bicep curl. And we start our 21s. We come up to the top. We're doing top to middle. And we do seven reps of that. As you can see, I'm stopping right when my forearm reaches the 90 degree angle. Then we drop down to the bottom of the range of motion. We do another seven reps coming up to the middle of the range of motion. Really destroying the biceps. I hate these in the best way possible. And then we finish off with the full range of motion. I'm swinging a little bit here. I'd like to stay a little bit more stable. But towards the end of 21 reps, your biceps are absolutely fried. So a little, a little swing is okay, but anything more than that, and you're just cheating too much. So those are the 21s. I would really recommend them if you're just trying to destroy a muscle group towards the end of your workout. They will be fried afterwards. Finally, we work on the triceps directly. We're going to the rope tricep pushdown. Now, the reason I like to use a rope is because it's less stability. So I'm really having to focus on stabilizing my triceps as I do the pushdown. You can do it with a straight bar. You can do it with a wide grip, whatever fits your needs. I like to use the rope. That's just me. Here we're doing 47.5 pounds for 15 reps, I'm trying to keep my back as straight as possible, really trying to take any body English out of the movement and just focus on using my triceps. 15 reps of anything is going to be really taxing. So putting it towards the end of the workout is what I would recommend. Just really finish off your whole upper body. After triceps, we're finished with the upper body portion of the day. We moved on to two core exercises. I did some cable pull downs and some oblique raises. Again, I didn't film them because, you know, it's an upper body day, baby. It's not a core day. But as I said last time, we talked about upper body days. I like to do two to three core exercises per upper body day. Find it to be less taxing than on my lower body days. All right, that's going to do it. That is upper body day two of the week. That is week four, day four of the program done. As you remember, we do four week blocks, then we have a deload week, another four week block, a deload week, and then a one rep max test. So block one is complete. I'm on my deload week now, I'm feeling good. Just taking it day by day, resting up, getting the joints back to uh, functioning properly, and then we're gonna hit it hard again coming next week. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you got something out of this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, consider subscribing hitting the like button, share the video with your friends if you want to. I'd love to hear if you're adding any of these exercises into your program in the comments. I'm hanging out in the comments most of the time. So if you got any questions or you want to just drop by and say what's up, I'd love to hear from you. Anyway, that's going to do it for me today. Get strong and stay strong. People have a good rest of your week. Get after it this week in the gym and I'll catch you in the next one.